we welcome in first-time guest, one of the many that are running for the Republican nod in the 5th District of Indiana, Patrick Mullader. Please uh, say hello to our listeners, if you don't mind. Steve, how are you? <laughs> Look at you. You've you've uh, taken the, the standing approach. I like that a uh, lot. Well, you know what? <laughs> Feels good to me. We have we have a lot of different ways that we can set up our studio so that you are comfortable to talk about that which you have decided to do. Sure. One of the what has turned out to be many seeking the Republican nod for the 5th District. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself to begin with. Sure. My name is Patrick Malater. I'm originally from beautiful Gary, Indiana. I have been in central Indiana now for close to 30 years. Professionally, I was a partner in an accounting firm. My background was in tax. I ran a national tax practice for one of the largest CPA firms in the United States. Retired from that gig about uh, 10 years ago and have, uh, like many people, been concerned about the country and decided to get into this race because I have some specific ideas in terms of how to deal with it. Well, I'll talk about that in just a second. Sure. I guess one of the first questions I would ask anybody nowadays in politics, why why do you want to stick your toe into that water? It It's always been a, a difficult, arduous job, but it seems like now more so than ever. Sure. Well, actually, I was going to run for Congress back eight years ago against uh, Susan Brooks. And I would not have been a good candidate at that point in time. I've spent a lot of time just thinking about issues and so forth and truly believe I can make a difference. So that was probably one of the driving force issues for me to get in the race here. I believe I can make a, a, a difference. And like many people in the United States here right now, there's a general unease about how things are, are going. So I guess if I asked you uh, maybe the two or three things that you think sets Patrick Mullader apart sure. from the other candidates running for the Republican nomination for the 5th District, what would you say those two or three things might be? Great question, and I have a good answer for that as well. I would well. hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, one is I have a, a very unique skill at being able to go ahead and come up with creative solutions to tough problems. So, for example, if you look at the campaign planks of the other candidates here in the race, they read like your typical Republican talking points, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to bring Hoosier values and so forth to that. Whereas, in contrast, if you look at my planks, there's a lot of spe specific topics and specific man manners in terms of how to go ahead and resolve the issues. And for me, it all starts with congressional term limits. So that's one. Two is I have very different uh, viewpoints with respect to women's reproductive rights uh, that I can get into as well to the extent you like. And then third, I have uh, a very grassroots style to this campaign in that I am regularly meeting with regular folks on a daily basis. And I have a really good pulse in terms of what people think about. In contrast to a couple of candidates, uh, one that put in $2 million of his own money into the campaign, I guess if I tried to do that, uh, I would be divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Though you are a CPA. Yeah, you yeah. You crunch the numbers and figure it out. Patrick yeah, yeah. Malater is our guest on WMUN. I'm Steve Lindell. You mentioned uh, women's reproductive rights. What What's a little more substance to your stance sure, on that issue? Sure. You know, first of all, my wife and I, we have five children. I believe in the sanctity of life. You know, I am not pro-abortion, but I am pro-choice. In my viewpoint, women here uh, need to have a right to make their own reproductive decisions in a manner that is safe, legal, and rare. So what do I mean by that? Safe means that you need to be able to go to a licensed medical type organization. So for example, Planned Parenthood, which lost its license here as part of the Indiana legislation. Legal, from, from my standpoint, it should be available in the first, let's say, 12 to 14 weeks post-conception. Obviously, additional time based on the you know, health of the, the mother and the viability of the child and so forth. And by rare, I mean, it should not become somebody's main methodology of birth control. So, for example, on the extreme end, 
someone like Whoopi Goldberg has had eight abortions based on a book that she wrote. You know, that's just irresponsible. Uh, There are many instances where birth control is available on an affordable basis if you're, you know, lower middle income or low income. So, you know, that's essentially my viewpoint. All right, Patrick Malader is our guest. We're on WMUN's Delaware County Today. I'm Steve Lindell. When you started your campaign, there was one less person in the race at that moment, the incumbent. Correct. Uh, if 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 she had been announced as running again, would you have thrown your hat into the ring this time? Probably not. Okay. And and why? <laughs> that's a good question. You know, in, in general, there is a lot of power being an incumbent in a congressional race. So just that power of incumbency, I, frankly, I, I doubt that many, if any of the other candidates would have entered the race under those circumstances. And by that same token, do you intend to stay in once you flip that switch? Yeah, as I've, as I've told uh, people many times, I'm pregnant with this campaign and this baby's going full term. So uh, I think this is going to be a lot of fun as it continues to play out. I'm just glad I didn't put $2 million into my campaign and, and see this happen. But, but in all sincerity, I have empathy for a couple of candidates that made life-changing decisions to get into this race. So, for example, Max moved his family back from Washington, D.C. to be back in the community to run. Another candidate, Raju, quit his job uh, in September to enter the race. So I have, I have empathy for those people that made a life-changing move to get into the race. Patrick Malader is our guest, candidate for the Republican nomination for the 5th District of the great state of Indiana. Final moments that we have. Uh, what else have we not talked about, you, that you want for people to know today? You know, I think campaign... Uh, term limits is a, is a key issue in Congress. So just as a background, if you go back 20 years or so, you know, the, 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 the world was at peace, people seemed to get along, and we were generating our fourth consecutive budget surplus. Actually, the head of the Federal Reserve at the time, Alan Greenspan, said we're going to be generating surpluses of four to five hundred billion dollars a year. And they expected the national debt to be paid off by 2006. Well, the first thing that ended up happening was a massive tax cut. And again, I, I ran a national tax practice and I knew at the time that cut that cut was going to blow a massive hole through the, the budget. Now, I was making one percenter type money at the time and I was pissed. And part of the reason I was unhappy about it was I knew what effect it was going to have on the budget. So what happened after that? Well, then we ended up having another big tax cut in 2003. We went to wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, threw in some social spending, and then COVID was the icing on the cake. And that is why we have so much inflation right now. We've just destroyed the value of our dollar, and many regular people are suffering as a result. Certainly the presidents have had a role in this, but the real culprits are, are, are Congress because they control how spending ends up occurring. And, and quite frankly, we need to go ahead and put term limits in place. 80% of Republicans, Democrats, and independents want to see this happen. So it's, it's a unifying item from the standpoint of uh, our, our population uh, on on term limits specifically are you a one and done guy two and done guy what's uh, the limit uh, my limit is eight years okay so four terms in the house or a term in the senate term in the house and 10-year ban on post congressional lobbying so that you don't become uber wealthy as a result of having served your time in congress well, Patrick Malader, we are uh, honored to know you. Thank you for your service and being willing to serve, and best of luck to you. We'll have another conversation. I hope so. I certainly do. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. Thank my you for My pleasure, being... too. Absolutely. Standing in the studio. Ex- Look at you. Absolutely. Love it. Love it. Patrick Malader, our guest on WMUN.